Hey there, Nick Jutakis here. In this video, I'd like to try something a little bit different and open up a conversation and ask a couple of questions around a very common topic for remote developers, specifically around company-issued laptops. For example, let's say that you're working for a company either as a contract worker or a full-time employee, and they've given you a physical laptop that you do your work from. And what's installed on that laptop basically comes down to two sides of the spectrum, right? On one side, you have a stock laptop straight from the vendor, whether it's Apple, Dell, et cetera, et cetera, and there's nothing installed on that laptop at all. And now it's up to you to install whatever tools that you need to do your work, and that's that. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you have a company issued laptop that maybe has a whole bunch of different things pre-installed, or maybe you set up an appointment with the IT team and they install some stuff for you. But uh, yeah, there could be antivirus scanners, like auto patching things, uh, you know, whatever, there's no limitation here. They could be monitoring your file system, you know, transmitting everything to the company. They could be taking remote screenshots of your desktop at random intervals without your knowledge, like, or maybe with your knowledge, like, yeah, hopefully you're not working for a place that goes that far off. But, you know, I think more commonly there is this middle ground where, you know, you might be working for a decent sized company and uh, just to limit their own liability, they do install things like antivirus tools and auto patching tools and, you um, yeah, maybe they have remote desktop sharing capability, but like you would always be prompted for that if that were to ever happen. You know, they're not just like, you know, doing employee surveillance for the heck of it. And uh, that still feels pretty reasonable, but it's interesting because I've been a contract worker for about 20 years and, you know, I've worked at dozens of different companies and uh, infrequently, but sometimes I do get company issued laptops to do some work on. And uh, oftentimes, though, I'm just doing it for my personal box, for short-term contracts, for smaller companies, etc. But yeah, there was a contract that I've been working on for a couple of years, like one of those ones where, you know, it's like 10 or 20 hours uh, a week, sometimes less, etc. But I really liked it so much that I actually joined them full-time about 14 months ago. And they gave me a company-issued laptop that was, you know, very close to the first Spectrum that we were talking about, where it was basically, you know, an unmanaged device with a very, very little tooling where, you know, it just made sure that certain um, tools were up to date. That was it. It didn't do uh, any type of monitoring, no antivirus, blah, 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 blah. But uh, then that company got acquired after I joined and that bigger company has different policies and, uh, you know, they want to install certain tools that were not installed before. Um, so, you know, it, it's more in the middle of the spectrum, you know, they're not doing like, you know, random screenshots and stuff like that, but still there are certain things that I do with the work laptop that I do not feel super comfortable knowing that the company could potentially access those files. Now, this is some questions to you. Like, is this a common thing or am I crazy? Or how does everyone else deal with this type of scenario where I have like a scratch pad of personal notes, like basically text files that are, you know, chicken scratch. It's internal thought processes, not like about the company and like I'm writing things about them, but it's like, you know, work related things, snippets of codes, links to this, researching that. Like it's not something that has materialized yet into like an actual piece of work that I would give to the company in terms of like a Jira ticket or, you know, a pull request or a new repo or a new service or, you know, whatever I'm working on, right? Uh, these are just like, it's an internal brain dump basically. And it feels really weird to know that the company may be uh, potentially able to read those files because yeah, there's nothing embarrassing in there or nothing that would get me fired or even hints or anything like that. But still, it feels like someone's creeping around like in the contents of my brain. And uh, I don't like that. And that's the first time I've ever experienced this in any work environment because yeah, I'm just not working as a full-time employee for a lot of different places prior to this. But I'm curious, like, what is your take on that? Like, where do you put those types of notes? Because, you know, probably you have a working agreement where work stuff stays on a company managed device, which means that, you know, you can't, you can't really write these notes on your own personal device or a piece of paper, even because um, as soon as you start referencing company stuff, then that's that, like it's no longer on the company device. And really the stuff that I write down, it's, you know, in general, the stuff that I work on, you know, it's not like low level crazy business secrets. It's like Kubernetes configs or links to like an AWS docs and, and other stuff, right? So it's not even like super sensitive, but still, you know, maybe you have like ticket references or whatever, whatever, like you just don't want to, reference that stuff outside the work computer because you're just, yeah, it's treading on thin ice, right? Uh, why why do that? But although it does bring up some really interesting points though, because in, in, again, this is like sort of going into troll mode here, but like imagine that you had a photographic memory and you didn't have to write any types of notes like that because you remembered everything. Like is your brain considered uh, a non-company device or a company device? Because, you know, if someone can remember all of that stuff in their brain without writing notes, but you have to write notes, are you allowed to write those notes outside the company machine as if it were like an extended brain? Like those are interesting questions, right? Um, you know, it's kind of trolly, but at the same time, like sort of legit, right? Like where do you put stuff like that? And, or, you know, maybe another question to you is like, do you just put that stuff on the company laptop knowing that, 
you know, they can just read that stuff and like, you just don't care. And, you know, chances are like, no one's really looking at that stuff anyways. And yeah, I don't know. It was just an interesting thing. And then also like this one's a little bit more, maybe not weird, but like when I first joined this company, uh, there's a dev team of about 15 developers on there. And, you know, when you're brand new to a team and you try to meet and greet and learn uh, about the 15 devs that you're working with, you know, it's not easy to remember details about everybody because at that point in time, like everything kind of just like meshes together. So for a little bit of time, and by the way, you know, if anyone from the company happens to see this video, I do not do this anymore. But, you know, I did write down a couple little high level bullet points about uh, folks because we have this really cool policy at the company where every week we randomly meet with one of the devs on the team and we just talk for about half an hour about whatever. It doesn't need to be work related. It could be if you want to, but, you know, basically just get to know your teammates. And, uh, you know, I would write down things like, you know, John likes skiing or, you know, so and so traveled here, you know, stuff like that. And, um, it just helped to be able to pick up a conversation for the next time that I see them. But now that I've been working there for a while, like over a year, kind of have a good handle on uh, all my different teammates that I work with. So I don't keep any notes like that anymore or even reference them. Now, those you can make a case for like, yeah, sure. If you're writing that stuff, uh, yeah, you can put that on a personal device because it's like completely unrelated to work and uh, kind of personal stuff, right? Um, especially, you know, when you have these conversations, it's like video chats, like, in my mind, that's like water cooler talk, right? Like, you know, this is a conversation you might have with uh, a buddy over lunch or maybe out in the parking lot. Like, it's not company information. But um, yeah, about those work-related ones, like, what would you do in that case? Like, even if you had a solution, like, I, you know, I have this little screen open here. Like, let's say that you have a folder somewhere and you've got files, like one, two, three, like, assume these are text files or whatever. You know, if you password protected this directory and the password was never stored on the device anywhere, then would that really help anyways? Because... Maybe they couldn't access that directly in the file system, but if you've got these files open in like Vim or a code editor or whatever tool that you're using to view these text files, then they're just sitting there unencrypted in active memory space. And if you're running an antivirus tool, that tool could be scanning that active memory space. If it happens to detect a threat in something else, it may just dump the entire memory and then all the contents of that file would be transmitted to the company. So I've always been, well, I shouldn't say this, but like I should, but it's like, if I can't find a perfect solution, should I even bother with it? Because like, what is the point of encrypting all this stuff if the active memory can be just, you know, decrypted and sent over to the company? Like, is it even worth it to do that? So that's one question for you. Like, is there actually a secure way to somehow do that? And by the way, you know, these notes, they're open the whole entire day. I'm writing in them continuously. And uh, yeah, it's not just something like I open them once, do something and then close it. Like they're just open literally for like, you know, eight, nine hours a day. And, uh, you know, multiple different files get written to. And then at the end of the day, like I just close the note program or whatever code editor and, th and that's it. But yeah, what would you do in that case? So that's my question to you. And then also another interesting side topic around this too is just around like network security with that device. So let's say that you have the company laptop and you're working from home and you've got a home network. Maybe you just have one router, one line from your ISP, very standard stuff. Now, if you have a laptop on one side of the spectrum where, you know, nothing really is installed on a laptop except for things that you put on there, then it's probably okay to put that laptop on your home network, right? It could be on the same network as your phone, uh, whatever else you might have, personal computer, et cetera, et cetera. But if it's anything beyond that, at least for me personally, what I ended up doing was uh, I researched how to segment my network a little bit. And there's a couple different ways to do this. The most easy way to do it is if your router supports the idea of having a guest network, you can just create a guest network uh, only limitation there is you have to connect over Wi-Fi, but the good news is, you know, if Wi-Fi works well for your setup, then you can just put the work laptop on its own guest network by itself with no other device there. And you will, it will not be able to find out information about other devices on your network because there are commands that you can run on, you know, Mac OS, on Linux, Windows, etc., that will list out all sorts of different IP addresses for devices that it finds on your network. And uh, yeah, you can just run an NS lookup on those IPs and suddenly, you know, you know information about devices on your home network, like, you know, device names, et cetera. So yeah, having a guest network is nice to separate that. And if Wi-Fi doesn't work for you, there are other solutions that you could do. For example, if you have a router that supports VLANs or like network segmentation, you can just do that. And uh, OpenWRT is a very popular open source router firmware. So if your router supports that, which mine doesn't, by the way, but you know, you can get a router that does for like under a hundred bucks then uh, you can install that and then set up a VLAN. Basically, you know, you can now have a wired connection with a separate network, you know, separate subnet just for your work laptop or whatever. That is a pretty good way to do that. You know, if you wanted to go fully off the deep end, you can always get a second line run to your place from your ISP or a second ISP even. Uh, you can do that as well. But yeah, I think from a network 
Security perspective, the guest network over Wi-Fi, if Wi-Fi is stable enough for you, is a reasonable low effort way that's probably going to work with any router that you have. Um, but anyways, yeah, like my main questions were just around like, what do you do about those personal chicken scratch notes? Like where do you put them in a secure way? And by the way, like the funny thing is like if anyone from the company even watches this video, like I'm not trying to do anything to circumvent anything at all, right? Uh, in fact, the CTO of the new company even said like, you know, that's an interesting proposition or, you know, point that you have around wanting to keep work-related files private from the company, even though they're work-related. So he said, research some solutions, see if you can find a solution that uh, will work for you. And then, you know, if other developers have, or anyone else on the team has any questions around, you know, how to secure certain files like that, then we actually have a solution for that. So with that said, yeah, let me know in the comments below um, about anything that I've been rambling about for the last uh, 10 minutes or whatever it's been. But uh, yeah, also, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.